What's up guys, this is Share talking. welcome back to my channel. All in today's video, I'll be discussing Romancing Festival Gathered Banner, as it was just announced and we will be releasing in two resets from this video. Well, uh, we have all the information on Reddit, posted by Hands43. They were buffed, but mostly Gathered's Banner, because I believe less people would have pulled it for Gathered as he was. More people want to get Rock, okay? That's right. So... Gerard is a hybrid, as you can see from all of his status. Not really great endurance, at least we always close to 100%. Just 108% STR and everything else is just okay. Well, he grants himself this helping stance when the battle starts. That when the turn begins, if everyone is alive, he activates two different effects. The first, he will grant a random surviving ally. An attack boost of 30% damage increase and a defense boost of 20% damage reduction. That will last for two turns. That's nice because it can stack, but it's just one random surviving ally. That's interesting, right? But the thing is, this guy can cast the same passive another five times. It uses 6 BP, so he will have enough to use it, and that means that by turn 5, actually by turn 6, because it's when turn begins and he casts his own turn 5 and then he only works on turn 6, you have 6 triggers of this. And like I said, it stacks. So you have a total of 12 effects triggered uh, in stacking. This can be awesome because 30%, imagine if you have Kihachi in your team and he gives like 10 attack boosts to Kihachi. That will increase her damage output by quite a lot, right? But you don't have control over this. On average, some characters may have better boosts, while others will not have. So, nice and all, but not really reliable. But it's a way to increase resistance and damage randomly. Then, when he uses slash attacks, he will buff all status for everyone by 5%. That's right. And when he uses sun elemental attack, he recovers the HP of all surviving allies by around 250. And it makes sense because he has his attack called Gleaming Slash and Valiant Slash. It's a double attack with 4 BP. In global, both hits have Slash and Sun. That means that he will then give a 10% status buff to everyone and recover the HP of all surviving allies twice. Well, that's okay. Or 4 BP. Then, skill number 3 is a 9 BP skill that will then buff all surviving allies status by 25%, but actually 30 because you have the Lash and Sun, then we grant this attack boost that increases damage potential by 15% for 3 turns can stack with any other source of attack boost, and that will also heal all surviving allies at least once. Okay, so you can see when he triggers his Lash and Sun elements. But now, for the other passes we have a 15% increase to everyone's damage, then a 25% damage reduction to everyone. This is new for global. And that's better than Scrum Guard. Scrum Guard is just 20% and needs everyone to be alive. Then he recovers uh, 2 extra BP from 2 different passives. Also grants defense up, decreasing damage taken by 5% for everyone in the party. Stack 5 times, so it's multiplicative. And by turn 5 you have all the effects. We also get a self damage block for one time on turn, and that's it. As you can see, there's no damage with this character. It's just about supporting the party by giving lots of random attack and defense boosts. If he gets, he can increase his own damage, but that's not exactly the point. You'll be able to survive better with lots of defenses. Well, Gerard has lots of different effects, and that's pretty nice. He can replace Liz in Enya, any of those two, but I think it's easier to compare him to Enya than to Liz, since Liz gives BP to the party. And even then, he's a little more offensive. He works a little different than those. I believe he will receive an OP grade in the O tier list, and probably a 4.5 out of 5 in my new grading system. The next one is Vagras, and he is a hybrid with 100% STR and 112% intelligence. Those are very old values. Endurance is 86 and Will is 96. At least the Will is good enough. Agility is kind of bad at current game as well. Now, Battle Begins, he gives himself this 
Onslaught Arrangement. When on Overdrive, you will grant all allies besides self. 30% attack boost that lasts for 2 turns and can stack. will also give 15 points of Overdrive Gorge to all allies besides self. That's strange. Because, uh, let's say the Vagnas like to enter Overdrive by itself to give Overdrive Gorge and his attack boost. When he is on an Overdrive attack, then he will recover the HP of all allies by a uh, small effect. That will be more than 1000. And also 3 BP to all allies besides self once more. Then he will grant all allies, uh, this time including himself, over hands OD damage. It will increase 50% of an overdrive attack. This triggers a max of 3 times per battle. By the end of a turn, he also recovers 2 BP and increases own overdrive gauge by 15 points. So as you can see, we can increase the damage uh, for overdrive for everyone by 150%. That's nice. It's similar to the latest version of Barthelemy. And his attack boost can also help. And it can be on overdrive as well or not. Then we have Scrum Guard, decreasing damage taken by 20% as long as everyone is alive, and when HP becomes zero, he will die, but we will recover the HP of everyone's by 1.5 thousand or more. He then has a uh, damage reduction by 30% and recovers on HP by the end. So basically, support. Very bad damage by itself, but can increase the damage potential of Overdrive Specialists by quite a lot. People like uh, Swift, like Kihachi and Creator and many others. Well, skill number one is a free C power single target hit attack that buffs intelligence by 25% of max level for our allies. Then the second one is 7 BP and can be used three times in battle. Grand self onslaught arrangement. So what does this exactly mean? It means that you can use this attack three times in a row it has just S power and you get this onslaught arrangement so that you have now four stacks of it that will give uh, four stacks of 30% damage increase for two turns and will give also 60 points of OD gorge when he is attacking on overdrive. The problem is how fast can Vaganas get into overdrive? I don't know. He gets at least 15 points on the end of a turn. Then, skill 3 is fast and grants morale up to all allies. That will increase damage potential by 40% for 2 turns. And it seems to be a nice skill to use when you are on overdrive with everyone. And, well, by the end of it, this Vagnas is kind of hard to use. You can increase damage potential by many uh, followings, but it's related to overdrive. It's not for all the time. And when you have the attack boost, you need to stay yourself on overdrive, and I wonder how fast he can get into overdrive. He does have the extra healing when attacking on overdrive too, so if at least he had a chase attack or ways to build overdrive faster to get into overdrive every two turns, this would have been easier to use. It's much like the latest or sometimes feels like the latest version of Virgil. That is very nice in theory, but hard to actually slot in a party. But nonetheless, if you use it correctly with the right units, you can get a lot of damage increase, especially if the enemies attack multiple times to give him even more overdrive gauge. Now, Wagner is a very hard to use character, so I don't think that he will receive a very high grade. A 3.5 out of 5 is what I am thinking about. Moving on, we have Noel. Noel has 122% STR. 95% will and 82% endurance. Not really a tank, but good enough status. Still has some intelligence to inherit and use ailments and debuffs. Now, when allies besides himself are attacked, if it's an AoE attack, it will still count. We grant self attack boost and buff STR by 15%. The attack boost follows 20%, lasts for two turns, will stack. And uh, yeah, STR buffs will stack as well, unless the enemy removes. Then he will grant himself this underlying power, one time that lasts for two turns. So, on overdrive attack, he recovers his own HP by very small effect. That's it. Well, this can still trigger multiple times because this guy has cheese attacks. 
Now, when he is being attacked, he will then grant all allies besides self this attack boost that has the same value, 20%, last for two turns, can stack, and they will also get this underlying power that will allow them to heal very small when attacking on overdrive, but you have to do it fast because it lasts for two turns, but you can get it multiple times. That's something that you need to understand. So if you get attacked like four times with AOE attacks, that means that you got four stacks of underlying power and four very small healings. That is very similar to one small healing. And then we will also buff the STR for then by 15%. So when you receive an AOE attack, you trigger it all. And as you can see, this STR buff when hit is just like Julian's version so you can even use them together to buff to buff a lot by the end of a turn recovers 2 bp and we also give 25 points of overdrive gosh to self that's good because we can build a lot of overdrive gosh by attacking because you always chase with crimson slash and crimson slash is an attack that has a chance to debuff the enemy str by 25 percent because it's rank 1, and, well, that's why we have Intelligence, 92%, it may not be enough, you have to bring people that buffs Intelligence, well, Matriarch will buff Intelligence, and will help no reach enough following, so, it's kind of similar to how Firebringer works, but Firebringer is hybrid, 10% for Intelligence, 10% for STR, and can double chains, but this guy here wants to debuff STR by 25%, and then on Overdrive attack, we get a chase with Salamander Claw, a triple S single target attack with slash and heat damage. For last, we have this word Finis that decreases damage taken by 30% and gives 30% damage potential. That's the only thing that he starts with, but since he's going to get attacked and then trigger many attack boosts, he can actually do respectable damage. And that triple S guaranteed chase attack is okay, although not as strong as some many other Overdrive mechanics. Skill number one is 1 BP and recovers HP by around 250 and grants self this guard up small, decreasing damage taken by 12%, does not stack with itself, but it's just 1 BP anyway, slash and heat. The second skill is support and it costs 8 BP and grants self fighting spirit. Fighting spirit fuels overdrive guard to the max and recovers BP by 5 for 2 turns. So, this guy has already 5 BP per turn. He would then recover 10 on that turn, and that save uh, 2 for something that you want to do. That means that by the end of a turn, you have overdrive. Next turn, you can use the overdrive attack and get the extra chains, and by the end of the second turn, you will still have the overdrive to use on turn 3. Then skill 3 is an 8 power attack with 10 BP cost that grants self morally up. Then skill 3 is an 8 power slash and heat attack that costs 10 BP. And Grand Self Monali up, increasing damage potential by 40%, and then activates the same Salamander Claw that you get on Overdrive. So that's a triple S power attack. And for 10 BP, that's not bad. You are actually doing a lot of damage with this setup, especially if you got plenty of attack boosts. So this means that by attacking twice, each one of these attacks have 12 points of overdrive gauge. You can reach 24 just because of this. And the extra chains gives 16. So, what we have here, we have 24 plus 16 plus 25. In one turn, he can get 65 points of overdrive. And that means that in the next turn, you can just use skill number one or a normal attack and you'll be on overdrive just fine. It means that sometimes you may not want to use skill number two. And when you get to overdrive, always use the skill number three because this will give Monali up and increase the damage of both Salamander Claw and also the other chase. So no is a kind of a very interesting character for Remembrance because he will allow you to do more damage to self-heal and he can even be used on hard challenges as well if you need hybrid damage and are in need of extra healing you can maybe sometimes replace your damage dealer use no that may not be exactly a real nuker but he can debuff he can increase damage potential and depending on the length of a fight it may be interesting, especially since attack boosts are not removed by the enemy buff break. Noob deserves at least a 4.0 out of 5, but I don't know, I will be testing this guy to be sure about his full potential. 
and especially now Remembrance when we are lacking damage can be very useful. Now we have Subir. Subir is a Spear user and we have 125% STR and 91% Endurance and 91% Will. I already like this status and 93% Agility so there is some good balance here. When you attack on Overdrive you will then buff all attributes for everyone by 20% then it will grant this defense boost medium that increases damage taken by 25% on global for only that particular turn and will also grant over enhance. Much like the version of Vaganus, this gives a 50% increase in overdrive attacks three times per battle. So uh, it can stack for 150% increase into damage when attacking on overdrive, including himself. Then, on the end of a turn, if he gets uh, 1 BP, then another for a total of 5. And then we'll also increase on Overdrive Gauge by 25 points. On the beginning of a turn, we'll also grant itself this Over Enhance that increases Overdrive damage, this time by just 30. But since it triggers 5 times, it can reach 150. Alongside the under 150, you have 300% damage increase on Overdrive. Well, we also have Hyper Overprotect Tension that increases damage taken by 30%, increases damage potential at all times by 20, 30% when on combo, and another 30% when on overdrive, for a total of 80% increase alongside everything else. That means that we can achieve 380% increase in damage at the max. This guy doesn't have uh, extra chains unless he uses Q number 2. The second skill is a 7 BP A power single target attack with piercing cold damage that grants self this King Guns Love. It's an extra chase on overdrive that activates skill number 3 just once. The effect lasts for 5 turns, so you need to use it before it's over. You can still use it again if you want, so that you can actually have 2 extra chases. It does make sense because of how it works. But just be careful with BP generation since you only get 5. Maybe it works well with your A. And when you don't have BP, don't use a normal attack. Use skill number 1. It's a fast, guard up, large self that decreases damage taken by 35%, lasts for 2 turns. We also give itself an attack boost that increases uh, damage potential by up to 55% to cold attacks and then recovers 2 extra BP. So I suggest you to use skill number 1. First, if you want defense, because this will give you the guard up and the cold attack boost. But to be honest, it may be better to start with skill 2 and maybe use this at least two times. If you have people like Chire, you can even use this three times in a row. Then on turn 4, you can use the fast skill to give you guard up and the cold attack boost because it only lasts for two turns, and then on turn five, for example, that's the, the end of the line because you lose your chase if you don't use overdrive, you grant yourself this pierce attack boost and cold attack boost via command of skill number three, that increases 90% total, and then you are going to attack, and every chase that you store it, you then give you another 40% damage increase by each attack boost. Or a total of 80% increase. So each new hit, you do more damage. It's kind of similar to how Hippolyta works, I guess. But I don't know which one will do more damage. I guess Hippolyta. But it kind of depends on the situations. It's Pierce and Cold, so it's okay. There's no much competition for Pierce. But for Cold, we have Kihachi. And she obliterates the enemies together. And even use Swift. Swift is also Pierce and Cold, so... You have Swift, you already have Pearson Coat. But this is also for Remembrance, and we are lacking damage dealers for Spear, and he can help. For all, I think Subir deserves a 4.0 out of 5. So, this banner here will receive a Silver Plus Award because of having 4 cards that do have some type of utility. I don't think any of them are must haves, to be honest. With Garrett being very interesting, and Noel being the second most interesting one. With the. Vaganus and Subir being a little more hard to place. Because Subir is strong, I know, but he does have a cycle that may not be so attractive. And Vaganus is all over the place. I 
think that he's much similar to Virgil, where you have lots of effects, but you don't know when to use and who to replace when using the character. So, well, it's a banner that you can sumo or not, because it has four characters, you have higher chance of getting something. So if you like the characters, I recommend pulling, but not exactly going to PT. And if you want to decide, wait for me to release the Rock Bouquet banner review as well. But that's just my opinion. What is yours? Please say here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I see you soon in the next video. Goodbye.